we didn't. The lesson talks about uh, Rome. We're done with Greece. Uh, we're done with el, el geography and uh, the last thing we discussed was Alexander. So today we're starting a new topic, which is uh, Rome. Now, how did Rome start? The last culture we spoke about was the Greek culture. And of course, for every empire, there is a decline. So when the Greek culture or when the Greek empire declined, uh, after the death of Alexander, a lot of parts were uh, used by the Romans. The Romans were or existed during the time of the Greeks, but they were mostly isolated from the other civilizations on the Mediterranean region. Okay, where is Rome or what, what is the location that we are discussing? This is Rome, okay? The part that looks like the tip of the shoe. Okay, it's surrounded by the Adriatic Sea and the Mediterranean Sea. Now, geographically, uh, Italy's location or Rome has attracted a lot of people for a couple of reasons. Why? Uh, it was the center of the Mediterranean region. People can easily travel to it from any part of the world, Africa, Asia, or Europe. And finally, uh, the people and the goods, they can move easily uh, through the water uh, parts or the water forms, but they can move very difficultly through inside of Italy because of the rugged mountains. Italy's geography was, uh, or Rome's geography was mainly mountainous. Now, another advantage that attracted so many people is that the weather was nice. It had an excellent Mediterranean weather. What does Mediterranean weather mean? It means uh, sunny, mild uh, uh, summers and cool winters along with fertile land. Uh, this weather was ideal for growing crops and because they grew plenty of food, Italy supported a very large population. Now, the Romans built their homes on the Italian peninsula, the previous long peninsula that I showed you that looked like the tip of the shoe. Uh, it sticks out or juts out into the Mediterranean Sea, and on its west is the Adriatic Sea. Uh, at the very bottom of Rome is the boot's heel that points to Greece. So let's go back to the map. This is the Italian peninsula. It's surrounded by water from three sides. The heel of the shoe points at Greece, while the tip of the shoe points at Sicily. Now, <clears throat> uh, there is a series of mountains known as Apennines. These mountains extended from the northern to the southern part of the peninsula. Uh, volcanoes also were formed on the Italian landscape. And um, this is all about the geography. So to revise it again, this is the Italian peninsula. It's surrounded by water from three sides. This is the location of Rome. The geographical features are mountainous, but excellent farmlands. This is why it could support large populations. And the weather is an excellent Mediterranean weather, which is sunny summers and cool winters and fertile land. Now, Rome was founded about 15 miles up the Tiber River from the Mediterranean Sea. So we can see the Mediterranean Sea. In another map, you will see where the Tiber River is. Now, people use the river to move the goods easily between northern and southern Italy. Uh, they can move goods, they can move the harvested crops, uh, and they can move easily through Rome. 
uh, now, in addition to the Tiber River, uh, the river was better for uh, moving instead of the seas because the seas were uh, filled with pirates that used to attack the merchants and steal their uh, cargo or whatever ammunition they have or goods they have on the ships. Now, who are the Romans? We were discussing the Roman Empire and the Roman geography and the Italian peninsula. Who are the Romans? There were two uh, theories or two legends or myths that talks about the Roman origins. One legend uh, was in the Inuit uh, book, and it's a poem that was written by the poet Virgil. He described uh, what happened, and he explained that after the Greeks captured the city of Troy, the Trojan Ionus and the soldiers uh, they lived and settled there and made it their homeland. And then later on, they developed and they married from each other and, until they became what is now today known as the Romans. And this is why they call uh, Aeneas the father of the Romans. But this is not the myth or the legend that most of the Romans agree on. The second legend, describes the founding of Rome in a very different way. This legend talks about two twin brothers, Remus and Romulus. They were uh, left beside the Tiber River and uh, they were the children of a Roman god and a normal human princess, uh, left out by their parents near the Tiber River, a female wolf or she-wolf, she discovered the boys and cared for them. Until after a while, a shepherd and his wife found them and raised them as their own children. And after they grew up, the two twin brothers, Remus and Romulus, planned to build a city along the Tiber River where they were found and they were raised and uh, live in it and develop it. But the two brothers argued about the construction of the city. Remus did not like the walls, the high walls that Romulus built. This is all what the legend talks about. It does not talk about how did the uh, uh, brothers develop into Rome. And of course, this is a legend. So it does, most probably it is not true. But this is the uh, legend that is passed on by the Romans from one uh, generation to the other. Now, according to archaeology, which is the uh, uh, proof or the, the facts, uh, Neolithic people settled in the uh, Italian peninsula as early as 5000 BC, and they built farming villages, um, and then they had to move after they used up all the nutrients in the soil. And then the Latin speaking people or the Greeks came back after thousands of years and resettled in the same place. Now, how did the Latin speaking people or the people who lived there, uh, how did they live? They lived in small groups and they built their houses out of straws, uh, their houses looked like huts, and these houses were built on the Roman hills. They grew animals and crops, so they were hunter-gatherers as well. And uh, this was the birth of Rome. And then the people there started calling themselves the Romans, and they started developing themselves from hunting and gathering to growing crops. and uh, taking care of animals. Now, um, after the Romans lived, another group of people joined the Romans. They were known as the Etruscans. The Etruscans uh, greatly influenced the Roman civilizations because the Romans copied a lot of uh, lifestyle from the Etruscans. Uh, now, the Etruscans lived along with the Greeks and the Romans on the same area. 
uh, and the same farming uh, place. They settled together, they uh, grew grapes, olives, and they used the same Roman alphabets. Later on, the Romans are going to develop their alphabets that would specifically suit the Romans themselves. But originally, they were developed by the Greeks. The, Greeks. the Etruscans had an even greater influence on the Roman civilization because uh, uh, they, the, the Romans copied the uh, clothes, they copied the lifestyle, and they copied a lot of uh, uh, instruments and developments in the farming. Now, this is where we're going to stop today, with the part that discusses uh, more details about what did the Romans copy from the Etruscans. We're going to continue it next session.